Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you all so much for carving some time out of your busy schedules to to join us virtually uh, and, and, and across many different time zones to learn a little bit more about Episcopal tonight. I really appreciate your taking this time to <laughs> explore our school and to um, and to have a sense of, of this opportunity uh, more significantly. We'll have a chance tonight for you to hear from several of our students uh, to, to learn more about their experiences and also a group of our, our faculty members as well. We do hope if you have a chance to visit with us in person and spend a day going on a tour, um, uh, speaking with, with more people here, I do think it, it's very meaningful to get a full sense of the school by, by seeing all of us here in action on the campus. But I really appreciate your, your uh, joining us in, in this format tonight. And I would say just to, to, to kick it off, I do think that there are several things that are particularly important for us at Episcopal that also make us somewhat unique. I think one thing that we care deeply about is the power and importance of relationships. It's one of the reasons why we are so committed to being a 100% boarding community with all of us students and faculty alike living together on the campus because it's, between, it's, it's based on the strength of those relationships that we're able to accomplish so much of what we're trying to do. It's the heart of our ability to share those messages that help our students develop their strength of character and prepare them to, to leave our school and be important, impressive leaders in, in, in all sorts of communities as adults. Uh, it's also the power of those relationships that inspire our students to be their absolute best academically and to, to explore new interests and, and ultimately to turn those interests into lifelong passions. So I think the relationship piece is critical, but also we love the fact that we have this beautiful campus on the outskirts of Washington, but then this amazing classroom beyond our gates to take advantage of all the, the remarkable resources across the greater Washington area to bring the learning environment to, to life here. And I think that excites our students to, to dig into their work in, in, in different ways. I think it helps us bring to life not just the, the academic content that we're, that we're striving to, to introduce our students to, but also bring to life so many of the, of the leadership lessons and the character development lessons that are critical. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Mr. Conklin, our, uh, Scott Conklin, our Director of Admissions, and I think he's going to then kick off the, the student panel and the faculty panel. But again, thank you so much for being here tonight. For those of you whom I have not met, I'm Charlie Stillwell, Head of School, and uh, we're just thrilled that you're with us tonight. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you, Charlie, and welcome, everybody. We're excited that uh, you're able to join us tonight. Uh, we're excited to, to chat more about our programming at Episcopal, and you'll have an opportunity, as Charlie mentioned, to hear from our students, uh, also key members of our faculty. Uh, and then at the end, we'll walk through uh, the admissions process and answer any questions that you have uh, related to the application process and um, some dates that you need to be thinking about. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Spears and our students, um, and they're going to introduce themselves, and then we'll open it up to a Q&A session. Uh, so to ask questions, we would just encourage you to, um, in the chat, uh, you can either put it to everyone, um, to me personally, um, or to all panelists, and I will relay those questions to our students. Um, so with that, I'm going to kick it over to Mr. Spears um, and have the students take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Spears, Assistant Head for Student Life, and I'm here with um, seven of our awesome student leaders, and I'm going to let them do most of the talk. And I'm going to start with, with uh, sitting here to my right and let her introduce herself. And we're just going to go around the room so you can um, know who you're hearing from. Sydney. Hi everyone, I'm Sydney. I live in Detroit, Michigan. I started here as a sophomore and some things that I do here include, I'm the head monitor for this school year. I am the co-president of the Our Black Student Association. I play the flutes, um, I play softball and just involved in several areas of student life here. Hi, my name's Patricia. I'm from New York City and I started here as a freshman. Um, some things that I'm involved in on campus, I'm a dorm monitor. I'm the chair of the discipline committee this year. I'm the co-president of the BSA, and I'm a writing student tutor. Hi, I'm Amy Amison. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I came freshman year. 
a few things I'm involved in is I'm a senior monitor, a dorm monitor, EHS ambassador, math and science tutor, and I run cross country track and swim in the winter. Hey y'all, I'm Will Sneed. I'm from Franklin, Tennessee, um, and I started as a new sophomore. Um, I'm a senior monitor and a dorm monitor, as well as being an EHS ambassador and the editor-in-chief of this year's yearbook, and I run track in the spring. I'm Jaden. I'm a junior, and I started here as a freshman. Um, I'm from Sydney, Australia, but currently I live in Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Um, some things I'm involved with here are the Chronicle, which is like the student newspaper, uh, the government club, I play the bass clarinet, in the winter I play squash, and in the, and in the fall, um, and in the spring I play tennis. I'm Peter Malcolm, I'm from Austin, Texas, I started here as a freshman. Um, main things I'm involved in, I'm the editor-in-chief of our literary magazine, I row crew, I rock climb, uh, I'm a dorm prefect, and I'm the vice president of the activities committee. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Reeves Rosaghi. I'm from Alexandria, Virginia, and I started at Episcopal uh, freshman year. Um, some things I'm involved in, um, I'm a dorm prefect, um, I'm an EHS ambassador, um, I play soccer and basketball, and um, I am also on the activities committee here. All right, so feel free to send in any questions. Um, I'll just throw one out there to get started, but um, can you all talk about your favorite class? Patricia, why don't you hit that one first? <laughs> then we'll have Jaden jump in on that one. Favorite class? Um, my favorite class that I've ever taken at Episcopal is controversially um, a push. Um, <laughs> What's a push stand for? Is AP US history. Um, personally, I love the class. It was a struggle at first because it was I. It took some adapting, to be honest, to get used to all the classwork and just the overall workload. But after a while, I realized how much taking that class benefited my writing style and also just like my quick thinking and outlining. And also, I was just very interested in history and all the topics we learned. So. I, like, 10 out of 10 recommend taking that class and <laughs> coming to the school. Okay. Jade, what, what favorite class? Um, my favorite class at the moment is probably um, Advanced Statistics. Um, I think it clicks with me a lot. Um, it's very different than a lot of other math courses, and I believe that math is fun when you understand it. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Mr. Conklin? <laughs> Yes. Um, good answers. Uh, how about there's a question in the chat. What is it like to start uh, as a sophomore versus a freshman? Um, yeah, there we go, Will. Um, it's definitely a challenge uh, because there's um, a decent amount of friendships that form freshman year. Um, but there's also a decent chunk of new sophomores. There's probably about 30 of us each year that, that came my year at least. And so when there's such that large amount, um, you kind of get to know one another quickly. Um, in addition, because your roommate's also a new student, so you kind of have something to bond over. But everyone at Episcopal is super friendly and kind and willing to make new friends, which I found super helpful. Sydney, you might have some, something to offer on that as well. I agree with everything Will said. I think the most important part is that your roommate is also a new sophomore, so you're able to go back at the end of the day and you're sharing the same experiences of being new, but the school itself and the programming, and especially those, this first month here, um, is so focused on making sure that you're well-adjusted and making sure that you know where to go if you need help, um, that after a while, it's, it's really hard for you to still feel new well into October because um, we just all band together and welcome those students to our community. And Sydney made a great point that we, we uh, at Episcopal, we room new sophomores and new juniors together. So when you're coming, you'll, you'll be together. And we make sure there are multiple pairs um, in the dorms uh, of the new sophomores and juniors together. Um, what else, Mr. Conklin, is coming across the wire? How about Episcopal often talks about the all boarding community and, and what that means. Um, can you talk about your experiences and, and why it's important to be in an all boarding environment or, or the advantages of being in an all boarding environment? Emmy and, and, and Reeves and Peter, why don't you, you three hop on that question there? I'd say one thing I did really enjoy coming into the school was knowing that we were 100% boarding because it's easy that we're all kind of in the same boat 
and all in it together. It's not like Reeves was going home every day to see her parents while my parents were 400 miles away. And so it definitely makes it easy to like bond with other people. And it kind of creates a deeper sense of community because we're all held to the same expectations and we all participate in afternoon activities and we all stay on campus. And so it definitely helps you bond with everyone. It also creates uh, a much more tight knit dorm environment uh, because you don't feel, especially at Episcopal, I know at other boarding schools that aren't 100% boarding, uh, the day students and the boarding students feel very separated. A lot of Episcopal, uh, since, I, since it is 100% boarding, living on dorm is like living with 100 of your brothers and sisters. You know, not, 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 not that much, but um, yeah, it's just, it's living, with, it's living with all your friends. It creates a sense of community that you just can't get anywhere else. Yeah, and then another thing I'd add is that um, just because you're all in that same environment together, um, we also offer um, like really, really, really fun activities on the weekends, and um, it's a really, really fun way for people to kind of hang out together and get to know new people um, like through those uh, offerings that the activity committee offers. All right, uh, another question. How is campus life like for boarding students? And, and what is it like being away from home? Do you think there will, Patricia? What's it like? Um, personally, for me, <laughs> personally for me, I feel like I've benefited from um, living away from home. I, of course, like everyone else, or most people before coming here, I went home every day after school. And although like my mom held me to the same responsibility as I had here, like I definitely had to keep myself in check, like what time I wanted to do my homework and just how to use my time wisely. And being a senior now, um, I feel like if I didn't go to a boarding school, I wouldn't be prepared for college necessarily or as prepared because now I'm confident that when I do go into college, I'll be able to use the time management skills I got from being in a boarding school environment. Yeah, kind of going off what Patricia said, like I definitely felt like kind of babied when I was at home because my dad was a teacher at the school that I went to. So I kind of never had that experience away from him and kind of my whole life kind of not revolved around him, but went through him in some aspect. So it was it was really cool to come here and kind of grow as a person separate from my my teacher or from my dad as a faculty member and like my, my family in a sense, but while still being connected to them. But I definitely say I've grown a lot more in the past three years that I've been here than the rest of my life. All right, got another question. Um, can you talk about the daily schedule? What what does that look like? Well, uh, Jaden, why don't you take that one right. on the threes? <laughs> so um, the schedule usually runs from eight fifteen to three fifteen p.m. Um, on Mondays, you'll have every class, so there's going to be seven blocks, but most students take six classes, so you'll, you, you'll usually have one free block. Um, on Tuesdays, you'll meet for blocks A, B, and C. On, Wednesday, on Wednesdays, you'll meet for uh, blocks D, E, F, and G. On Thursdays, you'll meet for blocks A, B, and C again, and then on Friday, you'll meet for blocks D, E, F, and G. So that means that um, when it comes to homework, your Sunday nights are usually going to be pretty busy since you have to prepare for every class. Um, the day before. Yeah, and then um, I'd also add that <clears throat> we have um, office hours built into our schedule on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, which are really, really um, awesome ways to kind of stay connected with your teachers and kind of take advantage of the fact that, again, everyone's here. Um, a really, really large chunk of our faculty lives on campus, and you know, you're able to take advantage of that, whether that's during those off-hour periods or in other free time that they have. Um, and then we also have chapel on three times a week. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and we also have community meeting on Thursday. And seated meals are on Mondays and Wednesdays. Seated meals where the whole school's eating together in the dining hall. Question about dress code. What's the daily dress code? I see it, Mr. Cochran. I see it. What's the daily dress Got code? It. Peter Malcolm definitely wants to take that question. <laughs> Amy Anderson wants to follow up yeah. on it. Go ahead, Peter. Um, I can definitely touch on the boys' dress code. 
Uh, so basically, it's a collared shirt with a tie. So more dressed up than I am right now. Um, generally, uh, it's buttoned down and then tucked in shirts into nicer shorts, whether that nicer shorts or pants, whether that be you know your khaki pants or maybe some suit pants, whatever that is, uh, tucked in with a belt. And honestly, it, it makes my mornings a lot easier. I don't have to plan an outfit. I can just wake up and go. Um, and then... The girls is not more subjective, but a little bit different. And it's um, no blue denim is allowed. But then a lot of <laughs> a lot of girls wear like dresses or skirts and a top or jeans or pants, not jeans, like any color pants and a top. Um, and also, like with Vespers, which is our nice church service, we have once a month. It is like a little bit nicer to dress the addition of a blazer or a cardigan to your outfit or your school outfit. But I definitely say there's flexibility with like still being able to express yourself in fashion that you want, but it being appropriate for school. Great answers. Thanks. A um, couple questions about athletics uh, and sports related to uh, cuts? Are there sports that cut? Um, and also, how hard is it to make the team? So you want to um, that? Sure, I'll tackle this one. So we have um, preseason, which is two weeks for football and one week for um, the rest of our fall sports before classes actually begin. And so you're invited to preseason as, a, as an incoming student. You would have reached out to the coaches of your respective sport, and you're invited to come for preseason. You stay for the week, you have two practices a day. Um, and then at the end, sometimes depending on the numbers and the roster, sometimes cuts are made, sometimes cuts are not. And then we always have um, a junior varsity team for that sport where you can turn to and ex continue to explore your interests and build um, your career. And then the same thing is similar, but just not as long for our winter and spring, um, spring seasons. And then I will say there's so many opportunities for you to explore different sports here. You don't have to know and be committed to a sport before you come here. You can try out new things. Um, I know I tried softball last year as a junior, um, and I loved it. And so I'll be playing it again the next spring. But you don't have to be like a uh, super fresh athlete or have played for several years to come here and try a new sport. All right. Thanks, Sydney. Um, we had a question about languages, but it looks like that is being answered. How about uh, the phone policy? Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. How, how does that work? Cell <laughs> phone policy. Reeves. Reeves. <laughs> you, you and Jake and Tag cell phone policy. <laughs> Reese's phone just went off down here. <laughs> but, and it, was, it was fine. It was totally fine. I'm turning mine off right now. Reeves, um, and then Jay, you go ahead on cell phone. Um, yes, so um, as a freshman, um, during study hall, um, your phones are um, kind of taken away to kind of uh, give you a really, really good study environment and kind of teach you really good study skills and kind of be, be able to kind of focus on your work. Um, but throughout the day, generally, I mean, in class, it's, you don't generally use your phone unless your teacher um, kind of asks you to do that specifically. Um, but during breaks and during free periods, that's obviously allowed. Jay, anything to add on that? Yeah, um, during seated meals, it's also asked that you put your phone away. Um, only use it when it's needed, I guess. Well said, yeah. We also put them away, try, try to remember to put them away during chapel <laughs> as well. We have a question about the strings program. Uh, we have a celloist out there also asking about music theory classes. And I know uh, you'll have a chance to hear from Mark Carter in our arts department later, but I don't know if we have any musicians here that can answer that question. Uh, I'm in the instruments ensemble. I do not play the strings, so I am play the flute. But um, we have separate, so the strings have a class. There is an instruments ensemble for our woodwind instruments and then percussion classes, which Mr. Carter teaches all three. And so you have a chance to come here no matter what level of a player you are and continue to develop your skills with the ensemble. And then um, you do have lessons that are required as part of your, um, your, like your class grade. And so those are at once a week. And so you definitely continue to grow in your lessons with your teacher as well as during class. You also don't have to be uh, very experienced in your instrument when you come here. I just picked up guitar this year and took it as a class. And it's one of the, 
this is a really great environment where you can try new things, try new instruments. Because uh, I came in here as a piano player and wanted to try guitar. The school was super, it was super easy to do that. Um, and you just sign up as part of your classes. All right. Have a question about contacting your parents, um, how that happens, how often. Um, can you talk about that? About that one, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Will, Patricia and Will contacting your parents. Will, you talked about your dad, big influence on yeah. you. Yeah. Patricia, how about contacting your parents? Um, well, honestly, it, I feel like it goes by person. My mom and I, we talk frequently. It definitely changes over the years just because of the amount of um, homework that you have <laughs> per day. So, like, freshman year and sophomore year, I called her, like, every night um, and even throughout the day. And then I would say now I call her, like, every other night. I still talk to her frequently just because we have a strong relationship. But, um, there, like, you do have time to speak to your parents and your friends um, from home. I feel like that's – you You have a lot of free time, whether it's through your um, free period or, like, before sports or after study hall or whatever the case may be. You have a lot of time to talk to people from home. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd say I, pro I call each of my parents probably once or twice a week, but I text them every day. Um, and just the biggest thing that I like, I just like needed to like basically schedule it in my calendar to call my parents because I can get into like the rhythm of school and just like get so concentrated on all my works and all my work and meetings that I kind of forget about it sometimes. Um, so I'm just, I try to be, especially now, but when I was a new student, it wasn't like that. Um, so I'm just trying to be more conscious of that, like my parents still want to hear from me and want to hear how my life's going. But definitely like when I first came here, I was calling them every day, every other day. So parents who are here, like be expecting that. Um, yeah, kind of similar to what Patricia said. All right, how about Washington, D.C.? I know that's something that uh, families ask a lot about uh, in terms of the flex experiences and going into D.C. during the week um, academically, and then also some of those opportunities on the weekends. And you want to use Jaden Tech Tech? Yeah, um, I would say that it's not only like use in the classroom, but also use in free time or through activities. I know that activities are like, Take you, they had ticket raffles off to Hamilton at the Kennedy Center the other weekend, and that's fully paid by the school and like such a great experience. But then also, I would say I go into DC with classes like pretty frequently. I had one week where I actually went four times, which is definitely <laughs> abnormal, but I would say probably like once a week. Um, I'm going into like a museum of the class, or I went to the mall, uh, the National Mall the other week with my American drama class, and we interviewed like random pedestrians on the street, which I would say is like more fun than going to a museum because it definitely taught us some life skills and some people definitely don't want to be interviewed. <laughs> um, yeah, the school certainly makes um, use of its proximity to DC. Um, so classes usually will go in probably about once or twice a semester. Um, I recently had a flex block for US history um, to the National Museum of African American History. Um, because we were learning about the Middle Passage at the time. Um, so usually when you go into D.C. for a class, it'll be connected to whatever you're learning at the time. And then also on weekends, you have the option to um, get a pass sign to go out to D.C. Um, and really do whatever you want, make use of the city, explore the city, yeah. Another thing I'd add that I've really liked about Episcopal's like Washington program is the externships that um, students do. So. All seniors get to do it, like for the entire month because maybe we don't have classes, but instead we do like an internship in DC um, for the whole month that this, that's run through the school. But I actually did one during my junior year as like my afternoon option. So instead of going to a sport in the afternoon, I did like a virtual internship, and that was really cool. I worked with um, like a journalist, um, and I like, wrote a bunch of stuff, and so it's something really cool not only to have on my resume, but just like as experience for life as I'm like applying to colleges and. Um, just like thinking about what I want to do with my future, just using those resources has been really awesome. Uh, I have another question about academic support. Um, I, I think you can talk about the academic support center and how students use that, um, but also just the accessibility of the teachers and office hours um, and how you may um, access academic help when you need it. Let's see, how about being in Sydney? 
Um, so I'll start. We have an amazing academic support center with staff that um, is equipped to help you if you do have um, a learning curve here. And so we have something called DASH and NASH, and DASH is Daytime Academic Study Hall, and NASH is Nighttime Academic Study Hall. And so that's a program that can help students if um, they, especially coming in, if they need to be a little bit more supervised during their free periods in terms of getting their work done. And then we also have several people that work within the Academic Support Center and help you um, through those learning challenges that you may have. Um, yeah, and like Reeve said earlier, we have office hours three times a week where all of your teachers are, your teachers and other teachers are available for you to come ask questions about homework, maybe need some practice problems before a big quiz that's coming up. And we also have student tutors. Uh, so we have math and science, language, and writing tutors. Uh, every single night, or every single uh, like class night during study hall where you can go uh, for uh, helping edit your papers or maybe questions on homework that you weren't able to ask about during office hours or really any help you might need through any of your core classes. All right. I have two related questions about visiting. How often can students leave campus um, to visit home? Um, and then how can parents visit? Let's see, Reeve, why don't you take that? And Patricia, maybe take that about leaves and visitation, parents visiting, and how often you get to go off campus for overnights? Yeah. Um, so, specifically on the weekends, you're able to take something called a day leave or an overnight leave. And those are um, leaves that need to be approved by the dean's office um, or um, someone that's on duty either on your dorm or in our um, student center. And essentially, if you're going on a day leave, you'll be back before our sign-in times. And you can either go into D.C., you can go um, into Old Town or uh, really anywhere that's nearby. Um, and then if you're going on an overnight leave, you are able to... Um, kind of get further approval from whoever your host is and um, go wherever that might be. Um, and so that's kind of a way that you can go either visit your family, visit your friends, you know, take a day off, whatever um, that would be. But that's all that's usually what we get. And in terms of parents visiting students on campus, like a lot of parents come to see their um, kids like play a sport if they have a game or if they have a performance they come and see that, or even if they have a chapel talk as well. So I would say it's not an unusual occurrence for parents to visit their students frequently on campus, especially if they live nearby. I feel like that's the great thing about it. Where school, like you're still away from your parents, so they still want to see you. And if they have that opportunity, they're gonna see you. So I feel like, yeah, they come to see their um, children quite often, I would say. A question about elective classes. Um, any unique ones or, or ones that you've really enjoyed? Let's see, um, Will, you and M M M J, why don't we see what electives you've really liked? Um, I my favorite elective class I've probably taken is AP Engineering. Um, it's not really like a fun add-on, but I've had really enjoyed enjoyed time because it's hands-on and the other. Like our first project, we had a partner and we built cardboard boats and then raced them in the boat, uh, in the pool at Episcopal. And now we're working on like making cars to race each other. And so I'd say that's probably like my favorite elective class I've ever taken because of just like how many hands on projects there are. Yeah, um, my favorite one is I'm in advanced studio art this year. Um, and so with that, we're basically just like creating portfolios that center around a theme. And so with that, it's not really like a super structured where we kind of could just do whatever we want and our teacher kind of just lets us paint kind of what our what our heart desires. And so doing it like um, art in a more like unstructured environment has been super fun and interesting while still like trying to end up with a, a product at the end. It's been really fun. I haven't taken any elective courses so far. All of my courses have been like full year classes. Um, but next year, I really want to take um, psychology and forensic science. I've heard great things about both of those classes. Um, electives are certainly more of the thing that upperclassmen do, sort of, the, sort of as they um, want to like specialize in a specific field, just like take electives in that field. Can you speak about what the honor code means at Episcopal? Patricia, well, you, <laughs> you and Sydney, and maybe maybe Pete. 
if, it, uh, if there's time? Um, I would say that the audio code is definitely uh, utilized throughout the school, but outside of the classroom environment as well. I feel like that's a very important aspect that um, I feel like goes unspoken. A lot of people, I feel like it just becomes part of your daily routine. Like you're constantly thinking about, um, of course, the four pillars, I do not lie, don't steal, um, and I report the person who does, and I don't cheat. You know? <laughs> but, um, but like I said, outside of the classroom, I would say it's utilized a lot, especially because we um, are 100% boarding. It's very important for the honor code to be um, utilized throughout the school year, especially on dorm where you're sharing things with people, you're leaving your um, belongings in a public area. So having the honor code in mind and having it be the foundation of the school um, and its values, I would say is helping me a lot because now I put a lot of trust in the people who go here because I expect them to uphold the honor code the same way I do. And then we have uh, also a way for accountability. And so I think that's an amazing part of our community is that we hold each other accountable, whether that's um, from your peers or from the faculty. And so we have an honor committee which is made up of eight seniors, and then there's a head of the honor committee, which this year it's Jake in. And um, we continue to, and, but not just the honor committee, but the entire student body, we hold each other accountable for things um, and continue to just support each other as we live together. Yeah, and uh, the honor code at Episcopal, it, it, takes, it takes form in all aspects of student life. Um, whether that be simple things like Knowing that when I leave my backpack outside of the chapel, when chapel happens, I know nothing's going to get stolen, nothing's going to get messed with. Or, you know, more important things like when I'm taking an exam, uh, I know that every single person in there is going to um, uphold the pillars of the honor committee and uh, of the honor code. And you're not you're not seeing cheating. You're not seeing uh, anything that could possibly break the uh break the honor code that is consistently held out of the school. All right, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Um, what, there have been a couple questions about food at Episcopal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> food, let's see, your favorite food from the dining hall. Um, and then um, maybe your one of your favorite local restaurants as well. We, we, we better hit this one with everybody, Mr. Cox. I'm gonna throw yeah. drinks here. Because food is my favorite, stuff, so we're going to go that way, just around the room really quickly. Breeze, go ahead. Um, in the dining hall, I love when they have dumplings at the action bar. And in the center, which is right across the street from Episcopal, um, my favorite restaurant is Am Pizza. Um, we have Taco Tuesday every Tuesday night, which uh, is always great. Um, and then off campus, there's a place in Old Town Alexandria called Mai Tai that I really enjoy going to. Um, the dining hall has a panini press. Um, <laughs> um, I often make a panini, panini. I think it's um, a great addition to the dining hall. And my favorite place at the center across the street is probably um, Duck Donuts. <laughs> kind of going off what Jaden said, I'd say my, my most consistently eaten food is um, Frosted Flakes from... <laughs> um, and my favorite local restaurant is in Old Town. It's um, Red Rocks Pizza. That's what I was going to say. Um, I'm a very picky eater, yeah. but I have, there's always an option in the dining hall. I enjoy the pasta bar that is in the back, or the pasta option. And then, I was going to say Red Rocks, but my favorite restaurant is probably Los Cuates. Um, My favorite place in the center, like Reeves, is Ann Pizza. Um, I actually never had it before I came here, so now that I've had it, I like buy it every week. And <laughs> um, my favorite food from the dining hall, um, it's not necessarily food, but I love the coffee cake from the school. I always, or the snickerdoodles, cookies, like I always take like a this bunch is, of back to dorm. So, um, my favorite food in the dining hall, on popular opinion, is the chicken and rice. Um, <laughs> just think how many, yeah, just think how many variations there are, and they're and they're good. Like it's. Protein packs, you know, you're, it's okay, so it covers it all. So I like that. And then my favorite uh, restaurant in the center is Bon Chan. Mm. Oh, all right, Mr. Spears, I think we'll go around the room one more time answering two questions favorite tradition, um, favorite weekend activity. 
Mm -hmm. Favorite tradition, favorite weekend activity? We'll start with Sydney and go back around to Reeves, and I think that's going to wrap it up. Go ahead, Sydney. Um, I'm going to say my favorite mm -hmm. tradition is May Day. So that's at the end of the year, and it's like a study break right before the week of final exams. Um, and it's on the down here on the front drive, and it's kind of like a field day. You just come out. We have like paint and stuff, and a uh, slip and slide, and it's so fun. And then what was the other favorite? weekend? Activity? My favorite weekend activity, I would say the shows. Like to do, you have shows to H Mart, shows to Old Town. Just there's all different types of shows in the movie theaters. So you never know what's gonna happen on the weekend. You can just take the shows or get dropped off and kind of explore on your own. Um, I would say my favorite tradition is dorm games. I love dorm games. That's the one thing I feel like I brag about to all new students. Um, it's honestly just like an Olympic style competition between all of the brother and sister dorms on campus. This is my first time being on a winning dorm, so I'm kind of happy about that. Um, and I would say my favorite weekend activity would be the DJs on campus. Um, I feel like, especially like when a lot of people come like it's just fun because you're dancing with random people for most of the time and um the music is pretty great too so i feel like that's a great activity that a lot of people show up to my favorite tradition is probably seminary hill cup and it's coming up next week and it's a big like girls sport rivalry in the fall with the school across the street uh, <laughs> that won't be named and um, it's really fun because we have like a big banquet before it starts with all the girls and then just kind of going around and supporting each of the teams on the quest for the cup is great and then my favorite weekend activity is probably just going into DC with my friends and getting brunch or getting dinner and then just kind of walking around and enjoying the atmosphere. Uh, my definite, my favorite EHS tradition would definitely have to be the Woodbury game each year. Um, the Woodbury game is the biggest high school football game I've ever witnessed. It's, <laughs> es it's essentially our homecoming rivalry game and state championship all rolled into one. <laughs> Um, and so that's always super fun. And then my favorite thing to do on the weekends is every on th Saturday and Sunday, the dining hall has a uh, brunch. Um, and so I really love going to brunch and I end up always sitting in there for like two plus hours just with my friends, just like talking and eating food. And it's always super fun. My favorite tradition is probably the winter carnival, which is like, um, a basketball game between the seniors and the faculty members. And um, that's always a lot of fun. And my favorite weekend activity, um, last year the school sponsored a bunch of, a bunch of shuttles to, um, to a hockey game, and I went and saw a Caps game, which was a lot of fun. Good one. Yeah. Um, my, favorite, uh, my favorite EHS tradition is tied between mass meetings, which are um, <laughs> a really fun kind of hype up thing right before uh, right before any of our big athletic events and May Day, like Sydney said. And probably for weekend activities, um, I love just spending time uh, knowing that, you know, all, since everybody's on campus, just going around, saying hi to everyone, hanging out with whole groups of people that sometimes you'd never even think to meet um, through the random activities at the school. Um, my favorite tradition um, would also be the Woodbury game. It's just, you have to go. It's just the best ever. Um, <laughs> and then um, my favorite weekend activity would also be the DJs. You guys still mind, but. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to our amazing students. We really appreciate um, your insight. I know there were a lot of questions that we didn't get to. Uh, we're going to hear from our faculty in just a minute. So hopefully um, some more of those questions will get answered. Uh, I know our students have to get off to their studies tonight, um, but thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you, Mr. Spears. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ebel, um, our <laughs> assistant head of school uh, for academics. And we're going to shift to our um, hearing from our faculty. Great. Thank you, uh, Scott. And I believe we have a slideshow to put up as well. Um, and while that is happening, I'll just uh, introduce myself very briefly. Um, as Mr. Conklin said, my name is Nate Ebel, and I have been at Episcopal now for 14 years. Um, and during my time here, I have done 
a little bit of everything. I uh, lived on dorm. Uh, I have coached JV football, JV basketball, uh, taught English, all things having to do with uh, the human spirit and uh, perseverance and hope. Um, and I have been in this role as uh, assistant head of academics for the last three years. Um, and I've got exactly three minutes to give you an overview of our academic program. So um, I better get started. Um, I guess when I think about our academic program, I think about the word balance. And um, when kids come to Episcopal, they get a good solid grounding, uh, particularly in their ninth and 10th grade year. We have students taking core courses where they're learning uh, core content, core skills, um, and everyone's sort of taking similar classes in that ninth and 10th grade year. As they move through their time here, um, they branch out and they start to discover what they love and what they're interested in. And we have um, a number of courses, a number of elect elective courses that students can take where they can pursue their interests. Um, we have over 140 different courses here. Um, and the students were talking about some of the different electives, but um, you know, it's a, it's a wide range of classes from, in, you know, in math from algebra one uh, up to multivariable calculus and linear algebra. Um, students have the opportunity to come in at whatever level they are uh, currently at, and they will then be able to pursue the study um, to whatever level they're able to go. And so it allows students a lot of different opportunities. Um, you heard about the languages that are offered. Again, um, a number of different opportunities, some really interesting uh, opportunities uh, as, as well. We have a, a number of students taking Arabic um, and a few taking Japanese as well. Um, the sort of signature um, element of, of the Episcopal uh, education, though, is what we're able to do with our 100% boarding uh, population and our proximity to DC. And so when we think about what we're able to do, um, students talked about it a little, but one of the things that we've been doing in the last year or two, we redesigned our schedule to be able to take full advantage of DC. And so every two weeks, our individual classes have the opportunity to go into the city, to use the city as an extended classroom, uh, to, to make connections with different uh, resources in the city, with the different experts in the city. And so students are getting that, that sort of core classroom learning here on campus, but then also having this amazing opportunity to go in and um, extend the classroom. And so, you know, for instance, in chemistry, they're learning, they're learning um, from an amazing teacher like Dr. Olson, all of the content and skills that they need to go on to the next level. But then they're also going in and working at the Lunder Conservation Center with chemists at the Smithsonian who are preserving historical documents and they're seeing their chemistry in action. Um, similarly, in our English classes, um, students will read a play. Um, you know, they're, they're reading The Crucible in class, but then they're also going to the Kennedy Center, seeing it put on. But then in addition, maybe working with the producer of the play and the actors to talk about how the, the, the different choices were made for that particular production. So they're just limitless possibilities for our teachers to explore and for our students to experience as our uh, classes use that uh, resource of DC. Um, the other thing that I would emphasize uh, in, this, in this brief moment is the fact that our teachers are really invested in our students as people, um, not just as students. Of course, they're, they're uh, very interested in, in how our students learn and making sure that our students are achieving um, all that they're able to achieve. Uh, but what sets Episcopal apart in my mind is that, that the teachers are really invested in the relationship with the students. That's something that we talk about a fair amount. And so um, it's really important to us that we know our students, that we care for our students, and that we meet our students where they are. And so by the time a student leaves EHS, um, they will leave with a number of uh, really close uh, student friends, but also a number of faculty members who have had a tremendous impact on their life. Um, and I know you could talk to any one of the <clears throat> faculty members on, on the screen, and they would have a number of students uh, with whom they still keep contact. Um, and so I, I, I want to wrap it up. Um, 
but basically sort of say this is a really balanced program, um, one that values students as as people as well as students, and we, we do all that we can to create an academic culture that that um, that helps students become their best selves while also learning those critical skills um, and that critical content to move on to the, the next level. And so I'm going to wrap my portion up and, and uh, pass it off uh, to Mr. Pemberton, who's going to talk about the McCain Ravenel Center. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, it's uh, a, a pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, so I'm going to reiterate a couple points that you just heard from Mr. Ebel. Um, one of the things that differentiates Episcopal uh, in, in, in my mind is this notion that uh, it, lots of places teach and care about holistic education and they care about uh, character development. At Episcopal, there's no, no question that happens. At Episcopal, we have something called the Portrait of a Graduate, and it's these are skills and experiences and, and traits that we hope every graduate will display not just while they're at Episcopal, but for the rest of their lives. And we all feel like if we don't, if we simply teach a student how to solve a math equation or to write a great paper, but he or she doesn't use that, uh, use those things that they've learned uh, to, to, to serve others throughout his or her life, then we haven't really done our job as well as we would hope. And so the McCain Ravenel Center, really what we do is to provide the infrastructure needed to help bring those portrait qualities alive in every student. So if you think about, there are basically three big components of the McCain-Ravenel Center. Events. Five times a year, the, the school takes a pause, and we all get together on Mondays um, for day long, and sometimes Sunday nights, Monday afternoons, and we look at different um, uh, topics or issues, and we bring in fantastic speakers, and we do a lot of, inter we, we, we hear from speakers, but we also do a lot of, we, we have a lot of interactive act, uh, activities with these folks where students are not just hearing from people, but they're engaging and developing skills that they need. So five times a year, those things happen. Um, we then also have something called externships. Um, I know some of the students uh, earlier spoke about those. It's yet another way that we take advantage of being in the greater DC area. So students during their senior year, um, that last month during the senior year, and oftentimes now, as, as, uh, as, as before then, they will take time and they will actually um, think about what it means, what what it means, what it feels like to actually be an adult and go intern somewhere in the D.C. area. Folks have interned with uh, they on the Hill, government organizations, nonprofits, um, you name it, they've done it. And, and they go out, they start the whole process, they figure out how it works, um, how to commute back and forth, and we support them on that entire journey. But what it, what, uh, and the last piece then, something called flex blocks. Mr. Ebel also mentioned that uh, fiscal, we have just changed our academic calendar. So four times a week, essentially faculty have the, uh, well, um, there are four days during the week during which faculty members have the option to take students somewhere in the DC area um, so uh, for a three hour block essentially. And so they're essentially bringing what they're learning in the classroom to life. Imagine there's sort of a three part process. There's theory, there's practice where you're actually doing something and then you're reflecting on that experience. And so when that happens, it's a really neat process because you own the material in a way that you would not have otherwise. And so we've had teachers bring uh, students um, some some really cool examples. We had um, I know there was one class that that um, spent the night in front of the Supreme Court um, so they could hear uh, arguments the next morning. We had another class uh, reading Antigone. They went and saw Hamilton um, in, in, in DC and connected some of those, those themes. We've had other folks work at the Chesapeake Bay. Um, you name it, they've done it. So every, um, every department, every, um, every faculty member does this, right? And so if you think of all the things that we do, all three components, right? Events where we're bringing in um, you know, people who have meaningful impacts on the world across, you know, every, um, you know, type of profession, vocation, uh, you're doing stuff, 
in the city as a class, you're connecting to your academic work, and then you're actually experiencing what adult life will look like and feel like. What we're trying to do is connect what we're learning in the classroom with the world beyond the gates. And that's exactly what education is meant to do. You're supposed to be tied to others. It's a communicative process and it's, um, it's something that that is just sort of in the DNA and in the ethos at uh, at EHS. And so in the McCain Ravenel Center, we do everything we can to support teachers, um, you know, thinking about best practices and, and the logistics for those flex blocks. We're thinking about the speakers and then obviously supporting students during that externship uh, process. And we're also tying it together in such a way that every single student feels like he or she um, is, is confident and really owns and lives by uh, those, those portrait qualities of uh, moral and intellectual courage. I'll pass it on. Bill, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Pemberton. I'm Phil Spears, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Um, I am uh, proud to be an Episcopal parent of a junior um, who um, is known uh, and has relationships just like with his teachers, like the ones that Mr. Ebel described. Um, I think they know him incredibly well um, in ways that his mother and I weren't even expecting important ways for him. I'm a ninth grade advisor. I'm a 10th grade health teacher. I live on campus. There are about a hundred of us on the faculty who live here, and there are about something like 50 dogs. Um, I'm talking about student life right now. Those co-curricular pieces that go along with academics, the students did a great job of talking about it. Um, in the half hour uh, prior to this, and, and I don't know that I can do, um, do any better than they did, but to reiterate what Mr. Ebel was talking about, um, this is a school built on relationships. This is a student life program built on relationships. You're talking about committed educators who are, um, who've chosen boarding school life and um, who want to be here with the kids 24 seven. Um, in addition to those faculty who live here, in addition to those dogs, there are faculty who like really bad dad jokes. I mean, Rev, Rev C right here. Our chaplain is my biggest fan because I'm always telling these jokes. And so you need to hear these here in the middle of this presentation. Um, you prospective students. So, um, Rev C, what do you call an ordinary potato? Right, that's a. Com I, I don't, I don't, know. I'm not sure. <laughs> you want to know though, Rev C, that's a commentator. An ordinary potato is a commentator, Thank right? And Thank so you very much, Mr. Spears. You're welcome. This is a community, I think, built on strong support. And so you see here these bullets on this slide, um, some of those strong supports that our community has. Um, we have a, a team of awesome nurses in our student center, and we're about to help open up a new health and wellness center here uh, in a couple months. We have a, a doctor, um, our medical director, um, Dr. Humphreys, on board. So there's medical support 24-7. Um, we have around 60 faculty advisors, five deans, um, two chaplains, three and a half counselors. You see here our new dorms. We have two new dorms opening up here in a few weeks which we're very excited about. And this does not mean Episcopal is getting bigger. It actually means that Episcopal is getting smaller in its eight uh, veteran dorms as we open two new dorms so that the strength of community can be, um, uh, it can be made even stronger. And so um, Episcopal is about to open these, uh, these new dorms. It's very exciting for us along with the health and wellness center. Um, and, uh, and the student life experience is focused on dorms and, and friendships and, and life there too. It's also focused on afternoon options, those things outside of classes, a robust sports program, our arts program, our outdoor education, um, and that's all within a student life experience that uh, includes friendship and fun in and around the nation's capital and in Old Town Alexandria. So we have a very rich student life experience um, and uh, that we're proud of and building on, literally building, you know, right now, and it's going to keep getting better. And, and um, I'll let uh, the spiritual life, which um, Rev C uh, leads so well, uh, I'll pass it off to her by um, by asking her, though, Rev C, how do, how do you call him an astronaut's baby? How do you call him an astronaut's baby? Yes. You rock it. All right. So yes. Thank you. Well, Thank spiritual you. life at EHS, been... this is Reverend Carmody, everybody. <laughs> It has been such a joy to welcome Phil to our community last year. Just, just, just endless, endless good times. Um, no, but a wonderful colleague and partner in the work that we do here. Uh, my name is Betsy Carmody. I am in my ninth year here at Episcopal, and I, I too wear a lot of hats. I not only teach in our theology department, also in charge of the chapel program here. 
Uh, also partnering with my assistant colleague, um, Richmond Jones, who's, who's in charge of our service life here at Episcopal. I live on dorm. Uh, I am the dorm head on Harrison dorm. And I am also the mother of a 10th grader who is who's in her second year here at Episcopal and loving every minute of it. So, uh, a little bit about our spiritual life here. We are in a, an Episcopal school and some of you um, might be familiar with the Episcopal church and. And maybe you even attend an Episcopal school now, or this may be the 1st time that you're going to a school that has. A religious uh, background affiliation and, uh, and so this has been a really important part of our life. Here, I think in a way that it really offers us a scaffolding. As a way to really express ourselves and define and celebrate our differences and find find the ways in which we have common ground. Um, I think about the religious diversity of our school, which is, which is high. Uh, we support students from across a religious spectrum during their time here at Episcopal. Um, but our worship services contain much of what you would find in any worship service. It's prayer, it's song, it's people telling stories, and it's sacred scripture. And it's an opportunity not only for adults in our community, chaplains, but also students who offer, you know, at least half and maybe even more of our chapel talks during the year to really wrestle with the big questions that are out there. You know, who am I? Why am I here? What am I up to? Where do my my skills meet the needs of the world? And what are some things that I've lived through that I feel might be helpful lessons for other people to reflect on too. So it's been, I think, the part of my job when I became head chaplain, it was the thing I was most nervous about was working with students. But like um, I saw Emmy Amison, who was one of the students on the panel last night, we actually both were just in the chapel practicing her chapel talk for tomorrow night. Uh, her father is actually in town, so we moved her dates so that he's able to come watch her run cross country in the afternoon and then uh, come to see to dinner and then watch her speak tomorrow night. So it's a really, it's a sacred trust that that we, that we're given here as chaplains. And I think for me, you know, I could go work in a church and I just can't imagine how quiet that would be. Uh, I love living and working uh, in the same place. I'm a camp person. So there's a lot about this that really appeals to me. Um, we're also find that as chaplains and as counselors too, that that we are here with students during some of um, maybe some of their first real struggles, um, maybe their first real experiences with loss, um, and and that we can offer help and scaffolding around that for them too. Um, I've been involved in some really powerful moments of student support here, and it's a real gift to, to be able to do that. Uh, but we we offer speakers coming in from off campus. We just had a, a Buddhist nun, a Gendomo, who came and spoke with us on Wednesday. Um, we offer different support to get students off campus for worship opportunities on the weekends. We just had our students from our Jewish affinity space be able to get off campus for our high holy days. So it's really our job here to make sure that you can continue your life. Um, and if that part of that your life is your spiritual life while you're here at school, we really wanna offer a lot of opportunities for you to support you in doing that as well. I think I'm throwing it to Jen. Are you there, uh, Jen? There we go. Hi, my name is Jen Fitzpatrick. I'm the director of athletics. This is actually my 16th year at Episcopal. I, in addition to serving as the director of athletics, am the girls varsity head soccer coach. I also advise ninth grade girls and I live on campus with my family. Um, this slide, I know there's a lot on this slide, but I hope that the visual gives you a real understanding of the breadth of the different offerings in our afternoon option program. As some of the students spoke to earlier, the afternoon option program is co-curricular. It's a big part of our community. It includes offerings in athletics, in the arts, and in other areas. And seasonally, about 85% of students are participating in afternoon options that offer athletic credit. Um, about 65 to 70% of students, depending on the season, will play on interscholastic teams, and those will come at different levels. Um, some of our offerings have three different levels, a varsity level, a junior varsity level, and then a junior or kind of freshman level. Um, but we have a total of 52 teams in 19 different sports and lots of varied um, levels to accommodate different interests, different experience. Some of the students were answering questions earlier about cuts and some of our programs will cut, but many of our programs are um, 
opportunities where students will try a new sport and they'll find something that they love and that they dig into and that they can excel in. Um, and because we have so many different opportunities, it's a unique experience and that team experience is a really important part of what we do at Episcopal. Um, if you come to campus, I hope you come to campus. If you haven't already been the athletic resources are second to none. Our facilities are fantastic, both outdoors and indoors and. With very few exceptions, all of our programs are training on campus. There are a few that train off campus. Those include crew, climbing, and swimming. And because we're in this great area, we have resources available that are 20 minutes away that are fantastic options for those programs to train. So even the groups that are going off campus to train um, are able to get to different venues Pretty quickly, our teams have so many options in terms of local competition. We're really using that new schedule um, to work in concert with the academic day so that we're not missing a whole lot of class. Kids are coming back after their competitions. Um, they're getting to dinner, they're getting to study hall. It's part of the rhythm of the day. Um, and what I would say to echo what I think a lot of other of the adults have mentioned before, um, We've got fantastic facilities that are physical facilities. Our greatest resource is the people that work with our students. In some, there's about 100 coaches that work with our athletic programs. Two thirds of those people are faculty or staff members and all teams with very few exceptions um, have a faculty or staff member on their staff. So they have a real connection with the academic day, a real connection with what's going on in student life and the rhythm of um, what it's like to be an Episcopal student and all the different demands. Um, our athletic department includes two full-time athletic trainers and a part-time strength and conditioning coach. We have three um, administrative kind of focused ADs and our real, um, our real goal is to make sure that all of those coaches have the resources and the time to really focus on relationships and the work that they do with teams and that we're making um, all the things work behind the scenes so that their focus can be on student relationships. Uh, before I pass it on to Mr. Carter to talk a little bit about the arts, I think, you know, I want to emphasize two things. The first is that I really think Episcopal is more of an and place than an or place. We have athletes who, you know, may be on the varsity football team in the fall, and then they're in the musical in the winter. They're pursuing arts interests during the day and. Um, I think all of our students are really supportive of the different interests of their peers and get excited to go out and see them compete or to perform in different venues and that our departments work really well together and support of each other. And the second is, as you go through the admissions process, you know, please reach out to me, reach out to a coach if there's a particular interest that you have or something that you want to learn more about. Um, we really want to learn more about you and connect you with those coaches and also maybe some athletes or individuals who are involved in our programs. And with that, I will pass it along to Mr. Carter. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, my name is Mark Carter. Uh, I'm in my 13th year here at Episcopal. I uh, also play a variety of roles as most of us do. Uh, in, in addition to being the chair of the arts department, I also run uh, one of the boys dorms and the dorm head at Berkeley. Um, I'm also the faculty advisor to the discipline committee. I have um, a son who is a junior and I live here on campus, obviously, with my family. And uh, I'm also an advisor and all of those other things that we all do, which we love and, and it just makes our, you know, our job what it is. Um, but I'm here to talk to you a bit about the arts tonight. And I, I just want to say we love our program here. Um, we love having students come to this building and work with us. Uh, the faculty here is extremely collaborative, creative, and inviting to students and each other. Faculty members come here sometimes and, and use our, our space to, to find uh, a little bit of a refuge from, from the day-to-day -day life, so it's, it's fantastic. Um, I also agree with what uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick just said about the fact that we um, offer things for everyone on this campus and that you can be both athlete, academic, and artist while you're here. Um, it's not an and or, it's, it's really an inclusivity type of, uh, of, of event here. 
And as you can tell on the slide, you'll see that we offer everything from visual arts, which is uh, sometimes the fine arts of the more traditional with ceramics and drawing and painting. Um, performing arts, uh, we have a full dance studio here. Uh, instrumental music, which incorporates strings, winds, percussion. Um, each of those have their own classes and then they work together to perform either full orchestra, wind band, uh, strings with percussion, maybe individually. Um, obviously, choir, um, which incorporates both um, the class uh, group that performs in chapel. We have a select group, and we also have uh, a, a two a cappella groups, one for each gender um, that perform throughout the year. Um, theater here is a huge program, especially during the winter season with the musical, but all year long, currently, they're in the production of Puffs, um, and which will be performed here in a couple of weeks. Very, very exciting uh, time for them right now to be in the black box and we, we actually have 2 performance spaces with the black box and Pendleton um, theater. And then we also have digital arts, which um, everything from digital graphics and uh, photography, video production and audio engineering, which I also teach um, in our recording studio here. Um, at Episcopal, so we offer a great deal of things, pretty much anything that you might be interested in. You can find here. We also, in, in addition to those things have, uh. Private lessons for pretty much any instrument that you would like, whether that be if you're in a class or not, you can take piano, you can take guitar, you can take, um, frankly, we've had everything from harp to, uh, uh, not didgeridoo, but close. So <laughs> we're getting there and, um. And frankly, we, we just, we just love having people here. So, um, I would also invite you that if you haven't been to campus, please do come, please come by the arts, uh, building Ainsley arts center, see what we do here. And, uh, you know, if you, if you decide to come here, we would love to have you come and join us here. Um, I think I'm passing this off to Mr. Smith. I believe. Back to me. No, oh, back to you. Sorry. Yes, Scott. Back to me. No worries. Um, well, thank you to our faculty um, for all of the information. That's a lot of information and uh, I, families can feel free to continue um, putting questions into the chat um, and either members of the admissions team or, or maybe some of the faculty will be able to, to answer those. I know we're running short on time, so I wanted to uh, jump to the application process and just talk to you a little bit about um, the process and, and some deadlines. Um, and. and also to answer any questions you may have about the application process. But in terms of the application, we have two common applications that you could submit um, gateway to prep schools or the standard application online, uh, which is referred to as the SAO, um, which is through SSAT. So those are two common applications. Uh, a lot of different independent and boarding schools use these. Um, they're on our website. We don't have a preference in terms of which one you use. So either uh, would work well. Uh, we do require 3 recommendations. Uh, so 1 would be from your principal counselor. Uh, 1 from your current math teacher and 1 from your current English teacher. Um, we understand that some students are maybe on a block schedule and aren't taking those courses um, in the fall semester. If that is an issue for you, um, just reach out to our admissions office and, and we'll give you some um, advice on, on how to approach that. Uh, we also have 2 optional recommendations. Uh, 1 is a personal. Uh, recommendation that you can ask another teacher, a family friend, um, someone you're close to, uh, to write the recommendation and also a special interest recommendation. So that could be from a music instructor, a coach, um, someone that's writing about a specific skill or talent. Uh, we do require a transcript um, and ask for at least the last two years of your um, high school or, or middle school experience. Um, we do require um, the TOEFL, Duolingo, or IELTS, um, there's some other options there as well for students whose first um, language is not English. Uh, we are SSAT optional um, again this year. So we went optional um, last year. Uh, we do accept SSAT scores for those students that um, take the SSAT or SAT or ACT and want to submit scores, um, but that is not required. Um, if you do have questions about testing, uh, I encourage you to reach out to our office. Um, we'll be happy to answer those. Uh, we require an interview. Uh, so we've really just gotten into our interviewing season um, in the past couple of weeks and welcoming families to campus for tours and interviews. Um, we understand that not everyone can get to campus, so we're happy to set up 
a virtual interview um, at a time that's convenient for you. Um, and then lastly, just some important deadlines. Uh, January 15th is our application deadline. Uh, we will continue to get application materials in after January 15th. So sometimes recommendations come in. Um, there may be uh, a transcript. You may finish your semester at the end of January and, and we'll often encourage you to wait um, to send that in. Um, but January 15th is we ask uh, when you have your part of the application completed. Uh, January 15th is also the application deadline for completing the financial aid application. Um, so if you are applying for financial aid, we encourage you to um, get that submitted and at the same time as the application is due. Uh, about 35% of our students are receiving um, some level of, of financial aid and affordability is certainly a, an important thing that uh, we recognize um, and want families who are going to need support um, to apply for financial aid. Our decision date is March 10, so that is consistent with what most boarding schools are doing. Uh, we don't have an early notification date. Um, on March 10, we communicate our decisions to all the students who have applied. Uh, and those students that are accepted uh, will have a revisit day program at the end of March. Uh, so it's an opportunity to come back to campus, uh, participate in programming, meet with students, teachers, attend class, um, go to athletic contests, uh, go on a trip into Washington, D.C., uh, go to chapel, a seated meal. Uh, so just a lot of opportunities to explore Episcopal at a little bit of a deeper level uh, before you have to make your decision. Uh, and then April 10 is when we ask families uh, to let us know if they are going to enroll or not. Um, I did want to point out uh, we have an open house in December um, on December 11th, I believe, or 10th, sorry, Saturday, December 10th. Um, we call it our Explore Episcopal Open House, which is a great opportunity for students to participate in three different sessions. Uh, there's a session uh, related to academics where students would sign up for a class experience. Uh, we have an arts session where all of the students would explore um, options in the arts. Um, and then lastly, an athletic session where students could explore um, sports that they're interested in um, and participate with our, our students and coaches. Um, so we're going to wrap it up there. Um, you have our contact information. You can certainly uh, go to our website, um, uh, send it to the general uh, admissions inbox, um, give us a call. A any of the admissions officers as well would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, we're really excited to meet you. Um, many of you have already been to campus, um, but we're excited to get you all here or interview virtually. Um, it's the most fun part of this process is getting to know the students uh, who are going to make up the next class of, of Episcopal students. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to being in touch. I do apologize. I know some people had some issues getting into the session early on. Hopefully everyone was able to join. Um, but thank you and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.